Stick around to the end of the lesson because we've got a great giveaway for you this month. Today on the Slenderlands, we're out shooting at the Orange Empire Railway Museum. They gave us access to their steam train with those World War II passenger cars. Very excited about shooting here. I've wanted to do this shot for a long time and they were nice enough to give us the access to their train so we can do it. You know, if you want to really make their day, like them on Facebook. It would really be a great boost for this little museum out in the middle of nowhere. It's called Orange Empire Railway Museum. It's Facebook at Orange Empire Railway Museum. Anyway, make their day. More importantly than where we're shooting, it's how we're shooting tonight. We're going to combine HMIs with LEDs. I'm in love with this thought of LEDs and HMIs working on the same set together. You know how much I love LEDs. I want to see tonight how they work when you need a big gun HMI on set. So let's get started and see what we can do. We're lighting a very large area tonight. It's three train cars long. We're going to need some serious power to make this happen. Because we're shooting both stills and video, we're going to need to light everything with constant light sources. Like I said, the area of coverage is very large. It's going to require a very strong instrument in the background to serve as a backlight. We rented an HMI Airy M18. It's 1800 watt seconds and runs off a single 20 amp circuit. This is one of the most powerful HMIs out there that runs on a regular Edison 20 amp circuit. We're going to set the M18 deep in the background and rake it alongside of the train car. We'll then put the Roscoe 1900 smoker up and put a nice layer of smoke between the light and the foreground. This will help give some great deep background. It'll look excellent. I'm really okay seeing the light on the scene. We're just going to let it be in the frame in most of the shots. The light has a one half blue on it to kind of cool it off. That gives us a starting point for our shot. I'm going to shoot at 1 50th of a second at f5.0 and I'm going to push the ISO to 1250 to get the proper exposure to make all these lights work together. Here's the first image with just the HMI. You can see that we have an angled incident problem on the car. The light is on an angle that's going to reflect right into the side of that train car. If we had a lift or some kind of way to get that light higher, we'd want to get it higher to get rid of that angle of incident. But we don't have a lift, so we're going to have to live with that angle of incident and hope that the smoke diffuses it enough that it won't be a problem in our shot. And I think that'll be the case. You know, now that the broad strokes of our lighting setup tonight are laid with that HMI, we're going to add LEDs to kind of paint in the image. The nice thing about single LEDs is that they allow us to use a single light in many different ways. For our first light, we're going to place a North Star light inside the second car in the background with just a 7 inch reflector. It's aimed out the window towards the ground to create light window patterns on the walkway and to get some nice light shafts in some of the images. We will put a 1 half CTO or warm gel on this light just to warm it up a little bit. In this image, you can see those nice shafts of light coming through the windows in the background. I love this look. It gives us kind of a nice dreamy background for our images. We will now add a North Star light with a 7 inch reflector on the camera left side to rim the couple. It's going to imitate the look of that HMI in the background, but we need that strength up front. The HMI is just too far back there to rim the couple up front. Again, we're going to put one half blue on that light just to cool it off. I love key lights that are motivated by something that feels real on set. In this case, we've got a row of windows that are going all the way down the train. I can put my key light inside the train car just off the camera right side. You don't see this train car, but we're going to use the windows to restrict the light so it only lights certain areas and to light our couple. Again, it's an LED with a 7 inch reflector. We're shining it through though the windows and they're very dirty so it softens the light up a lot and gives us a nice look on their faces. We've got a nice light on his face because it keys through the window from the train on the right. We've got a nice rim on her but it's still a little too dark up front. We're going to need to add one more light. Our last light is an octodome on a North Star light just to the camera right side. I'm going to pan it towards them to just open up the shadows a little bit and let a little bit of that light open up the side of the train. Our talent, she's in a black dress. It's a little dark. His uniform's dark, she's dark. Kind of makes the whole scene a little difficult to put together. And so we had a red jacket there that we put on her. It gave us a good color contrast. It really helped her to stand out. Let's see how that changed the image. So here's some of the final images with that red dress. You know, it's now time to shoot some video for our shot. I really like to motivate the camera moves on action, so I'm going to have a person walk into the frame on the camera left side, cross the couple and get on the train. This means I can pan down low and pan up to the couple, offering the action of the individual walking in, and then I can settle in to see our couple as they have their intimate moment. I don't know how intimate it was, but as they have a moment, as they kiss. You know, I'm switching back and forth with the two couples I have. I shoot some of the times, one couple in the front, then the next time, the other couple. 
So we've got a few shots of each of them. I love the idea of the old shots I saw of people kissing out the windows of the train as they were leaving. So I got the camera up high so I could look at this couple kissing and be able to see the couple in the background. It was a really great look. I took some of the images into Photoshop and changed them to black and white just for fun. You know, I went to image adjustments, then selected black and white. This brings up a panel with different color sliders representing the different colors in the spectrum. I pushed the magenta to 135% or even more in some of the images. This brightened up her face and brightened up her dress and helped her to stand out in the foreground in that black and white. As you push that yellow up, it brightens up the background and helps them stand out better. This was an epic shoot that was a tremendous amount of work. But after this shoot, I feel very comfortable mixing LEDs with HMIs. They're both daylight balanced. They just work very well together. HMIs lay down those big lights to give you the big look, and then the LEDs go in to give you the little touches that kind of light the shot and make it really work. You know, I must say I'm spoiled because we run six or eight of these LEDs off from the one circuit. It's just so nice that you can run six lights off from a single 20 amp circuit. That's unheard of in the past. Now the HMI, different story. It's gotta have its own generator. Again, I wanna thank the Orange Empire Railway Museum for allowing us to work at their museum. It was very cool of them. We appreciate it very much because remember, I am a train nerd. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. So this month, we've got an incredible giveaway for you. We've got Lens Pro to Go that's going to give away $300 worth of Lens Pro to Go bucks. We've got Spider Holster that's going to give away their Spider Pro complete camera kit. We also have Photoplex that's going to give away a speed light kit which is a great little set with two Octodomes for your speed lights, an incredible kit to take on location. And last of all, Squarespace is going to give away memberships on their website. So check this out. All four of these things, go to theslanderlens.com. You can sign up there. You can win in any one of four different ways. So don't miss out on this giveaway this month. Make sure you subscribe to the Slant of Lens. Seriously, you're still sitting there? You haven't subscribed yet? Oh, come on. Hit the button. Subscribe.